what's up everybody so in this video I'm gonna be talking to you about the cost of living here in Vietnam and so I'm gonna be breaking up into a couple of different sections so we're going to be uh, I'm going to be talking about housing and apartments that costs and then I'm going to be also be talking about <laughs> I'm gonna also be talking about um, food then technology and last healthcare so what we're doing now is we're taking this big dog and we're going to District 1 to get some coffee. So she's freaking out because she's got that mask on. It's one of the requirements here in uh, Mastery. So this is uh, District 2 right now. Thursday morning. Very beautiful. Wow, what a good girl. <laughs> oh, God. And so I got to drive. Uh, so I have to drive the uh, dog. And I have to drive Junie. Myself. <laughs> She's too big for that. So anyways, that's what we're doing. And so that's her little water dish right there. So our plan is to uh, zip over to District 1. Uh, Junie said yesterday that uh, she wanted to hit up a cafe in District 1. It's very beautiful because she can work from home for now. Because uh, our company had to change and obviously I'm self-employed so I can do whatever. Uh, and then I was like, why don't we take the dog? So that's what we're doing. So, all right, let's go. Đấy. Yeah, just hold that. Đây nè, đây đây, lên cái chân đi. Em gọi cho đây. Rồi, đúng rồi, làm đó. She's too big. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Junior, your camera's still on. Đấy. Yeah, so just make sure you point it. Yeah, don't just point it. Alright, I got that. Right. You can cut that. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... Yeah, I'm not gonna... Bye, really. Yeah. Suffer by heavy people. Alright, did you put the uh, camera in there? I'm not going to cut it out because that's, uh, I think that's what people like a little bit about my videos. They're kind of just, I'm not lost LeBlanc where... Huh? I don't want to follow the major people's idea. I want to do whatever I want to do. I don't... I'm not going to be doing like, oh, here's a drone shot and here's a big fancy music. That's not my style. My style is driving a bike with a dog and you on the back. <laughs> All right. All right, so District 2 has a lot of nice cafes, but our plan is to just go visit the uh, uh, cathedral. Junie, I'm talking into the camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Oh, Junior, you can point down at the dog as well. Yeah. Incorporate the dog into the video. Thank God. Some, some Vietnamese are very polite drivers like that guy. He waited for me. That was really nice. Okay. So I don't know what they're doing over here. They're, they destroyed the bridge. That was my main way to get to District 1 really quick and easy. So now we have to go through this way. It's all right. It's got a great view of a landmark coming up. Ah, I'm gonna tear off the mask so I can breathe. There we go. There we go. Huh? Yeah, but I'm talking, so it's annoying. I'm talking, it's annoying. Yeah, so that's a landmark, tallest building in Vietnam right in front of you. It's a really weird building because it's so uh, impressive and strange looking from far away. 
and like you're right up in front of it it's actually oh it's really small actually it's not it's not a big building at all oh dog careful yeah good Junie yeah get, get the building a bit more all right And this is that whole landmark area development. It's quite nice over here. Can you hold the camera? Yeah, it's quite nice over here. Um, I'm not sure I would live over here. It's kind of ice, obviously it's isolated. And it's a bit small too. Like there's only a few towers over here. But definitely recommend checking out Landmark because it has a lot of like nice bars that you can check out inside and like rooftop views and also there's like a park here too that you've seen probably in other YouTube videos of like people sitting on grass with Landmark right behind them or whatever that's this place there's a big park here and it's really nice you can take a picnic get a bottle of wine some bread and cheese and <laughs> you know go have a picnic here it's really nice come here at like five o'clock six o'clock sun setting it's a really nice little thing to do. So we just parked the bike. We're fishing one. All right, slow down, dog. The dog just took a <laughs> the dog just took a huge dump, so we gotta go throw it out. <laughs> all right, so oh, all right, so everyone's so let's get to apartments. So apartments and housing, you have a few different options here in Ho Chi Minh City. You can. The price really depends on the district, and so if I had to give a, uh, oh, here you go, dude. Here, here. Yeah. You want to go to Highlands Coffee? Yeah. Really? Let's walk around a bit, Junie. Find a different place. No? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. So it really just depends. Oh man, it depends on like uh, what district you're in. District uh, one, two, three, seven. The price points all vary. And it depends whether or not you're staying in like an apartment or a house. And so I personally, for most expats, I definitely would recommend staying more of like in an apartment building type deal. Cause like when I first got to Ho Chi Minh City, you can see my, one of my earlier videos, but uh, I stayed in a, uh, it's really nice here actually. All right, everybody. So let's talk about apartments. So. Junie's ordering coffee right now, so she'll be back in just a second, but uh, apartments really just depend on uh, where you live, what district. So district one's gonna be typically the most expensive. The farther away you get from district one, you can typically find lower priced places. I would say district one and district two are going to be the most expensive areas in the city, uh, especially district two, because that's where most of the expats live. That's where all the new development is. That's where all the really nice buildings are. Uh, so if you want something that's very, uh, modern, you can find it in District 2, but you have to pay for it just a little bit. Uh, it's going to be more expensive. Uh, in order to find places, well, that's hard. There's no there's no one-stop shop to find a place. So you can use like a Facebook group. Here you go, Jane. You can use a you can use a Facebook group. I'll get the I'll get the coffee when it's ready. You can use a Facebook group, and I don't recommend a Facebook group in general because the ones that are geared for expats are just a place where this is gonna sound really dumb, but it's true. Like you'll have pretty Vietnamese girls that are like 22, 23 on these Facebook groups, and they get a commission by placing you at a, a place. So they have no, their incentive is just to charge as much as they possibly can. And they also use that oh, I'm so like a pretty and attractive girl that they'll add you on a they'll add you as a friend on Facebook. Uh, it's really weird. <laughs> like I joined these Facebook groups to look for a place, and it's like a, like ten friend requests from these random accounts, these very pretty girls, and then it's just ended up being a big waste of time in general because uh, most of the places they showed me were like random little apartments, and like they'll, they'll pick a random place, like like this place, and then above there will be an apartment. And they'll show me like just really junky apartments, and then they want to like uh, overcharge me, and so. You come out here. That's something you got to be a little bit careful with, not getting because uh, you are going to be overcharged as a foreigner for rent. So that's kind of like in general, I would recommend for most foreigners to uh, stay more like in an apartment building because the prices are a little bit more standard. But again, it's just a thing here being in Vietnam. It's just something you got to kind of accept. It's like an expat tax, I would say. Like they always want to increase the price a little bit more. 
Like Junie and her sister were paying 17 million or so for their place at Mastery. And like I looked at Mastery when I first came here and the person, I looked at a similar room, they wanted 30 million. It's like, I'm not paying a thousand dollars. Money's not an issue, it just comes down obviously to the value. So anyways, for the price points for apartments, you can find anything from, you know, $350, $400, up to $2,000. Just depends on what your budget is and what you kind of want. I think for most foreigners, like if you want, like I want hot water, I want like a clean place, I want like a, like a, in a neighborhood, no problem. You can find a place for $500, like that. So you gotta increase your budget just a little bit because I personally do find that, um, oh, it's ready? I personally do find that uh, ready. Uh, that apartments here in general are a little bit more uh, expensive. Where do I go? There we go. Apartments are a little bit more expensive here than say somewhere like Thailand. Yeah, thank you. Ah, God, I'm, I'm gonna do this. There we go. Wait. Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh man, I hope I don't drop it. Apartments are a little bit more expensive than they are in Thailand. But you get a lot more for apartments here. So like what I mean is like, if you look at like one of my earlier videos. Uh, really? Really? Oh. If you look at one of my earlier videos here, you'll see my rooftop condo in Thailand. And that cost me, uh, there we go. Uh, 11,000 baht and then I had to pay electricity and I had to pay for my own internet so all in all I was spending about 14,000 uh, baht for that place so that comes out to like 400 or 500 dollars something like that and I had a rooftop pool it was very very beautiful oh man and like places like that here don't exist for that price range so Vietnam's weird because like it is one of the cheapest countries but there are some things like that that are a little bit more expensive. So like a place like Bangkok's fantastic for the value you get for your money in terms of property. Vietnam's just more expensive in part because they just want to overcharge foreigners by I would say like a million dong, like 50, 60 dong, like not, we're not talking like a ton of money sometimes, but like we're talking like small money, but that's it. Boy, so where do I, like where would I suggest living as an expat too? I also get asked that. Just a pet. That, that's a hard question because some I've talked to a lot of expats who are like adamant about District One here, and <laughs> and I don't you know I love District One but I wouldn't want to live here. I I I'll admit like I'm a District Two kind of guy like and, and I, I know a lot of foreigners. Uh, but that's not real Vietnamese. But all right, whatever. But District Two is so nice, and then you can enjoy the rest of the city like this. You get the best of both worlds. You get to live in somewhere that's kind of chill and, and has more trees and green. And that's something that I like. Because like when I lived in uh, Bangkok, I lived in Udom Suk. And Udom Suk, if you, well, uh, most of you don't know, but Udom Suk is like uh, on the BTS line, but it's like far down the BTS line. And it's more like this, like more nature a little bit. And so I could just jump on the BTS and go into the city center. And that's sort of like why I like personally like District 2, because it's a little bit more calm, chill, variety of foods and restaurants, just really beautiful. And then you can enjoy the city. Like, you know, it took me and Junie 15 minutes to zip over here. So, anyways, that's it for apartments. Uh, cost of apartment, 450. Five, you'd be spending about 500 to $2,000, depending on where you want to live. I think most foreigners would find a place that's like $500, $600 acceptable. And, it's also common here to have your internet uh, included in the room, which is really nice. Uh, like in Bangkok, for example, you have to pay for your own internet. And so you also have to pay for electricity, which isn't too expensive either here. So that's it for apartments. Yes, wait, uh... All right, so let's talk briefly about uh, cost of food here, Vietnam. So... Jeez, careful, dog. <laughs> oh god, like it's like a kid just not paying attention at all. There we go. Alright. Alright, so food is very simple. Food in Vietnam is incredibly cheap. Cheaper than any country I've been to personally. Even cheaper than 
uh, Thailand. And it's great because you have a lot of different options. I'm not sure if the dog can go on this. Come on, dog. Oh boy, she's, a, she's in sensory overload here. So, Vietnam's great because, Junie, can you take her? Look. Ah, ah, there we go, there we go, okay. So you can go to a really affordable place, like the uh, co-op. It's like uh, actually the name of a grocery store here. It's uh, one of the places that I go to quite regularly. And I usually spend like 300,000 dong, and that, that, that's food for the entire day for me. And so it really just depends on like your budget and what you want to spend. You have places here, literally called Co-op. That's the name of it, right Junie? Yeah. Co-op, yeah. Very, very affordable uh, grocery store. Uh, things are like just, I don't know, I just, food's here really cheap. It's like you can get fruit, like cut fruit, like watermelon for 10,000 dong at the co-op. Get chocolate for 20,000. You can go get some beef and eggs for 100,000 dong. That's what I do, you know, just, yeah, super cheap. Uh, but Vietnam also has its more, uh, obviously expensive places. So they have Anaman Market, which I have a video on in this channel that you can check out. And so Anaman Market, what is it called, Anam? Anam. Anam, I always mispronounce that. Anam, <laughs> whatever that means. Anam Market, which is a, a more of a premium place here where they have uh, just more expensive, higher quality products. So if you want to spend something a little bit more, you can do that. Now in terms of like eating out, obviously Asia is generally famous for uh, that kind of thing, how low price, low price places to eat, get food. So, there's restaurants here. Of a wide variety, Hello. so, you know, if you want something like, go spend even 250,000 dong. Like last night for my dinner, I had a hamburger and it was like a promotion, so it's like a uh, premium hamburger, fries, and two glasses of wine because that was the promotion for 250,000 dong. So uh, even restaurants that are supposed to be more expensive are still really affordable. <clears throat> so it's funny. But they also have their cheap places. Like uh, along the canal here is one of my favorite spots in the city to get some good cheap Vietnamese food with good cheap beer. You can get a ton of food for four people for 200 something thousand dong, which is like six dollars. So. You have, your, you have a lot of flexibility with, with regards to um, how much you want to spend on food. So, you know, in general, um, that's what you kind of can expect here. So if you're on a budget, like you're an English teacher, or you know, you, you, know, you make $1,500, like no problem. You can shop at the co-op generally, buy your fruits and vegetables and meat there. You know, you can get a place that's like $500 and keep your costs cheap and, and not, feel like you're sacrificing you know when I say like on a budget I mean like it doesn't mean like you're you're sacrificing just being a little bit more conscious and aware of like what you're spending and so that's pretty much it so you have your grocery stores for cheap you have your restaurants for cheap you have your expensive places and that you have that flexibility depending on your budget so Vietnam's awesome like that, where some days, like, I'll spend a whopping 300,000 dong in one day, and that's it, like, that's it, 250,000 dong in one day, and I'm done, like, that's, that's all I need. Other days, you know, other days I spend 2 million dong in one day, 100 bucks, just depends, so, anyways, <clears throat> Junie, where, what is this place called? Does, it, does this place have a name? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Idea. So what does that say? This right here. Don't let your dog run the grass. Yeah, yeah. Or don't bring your dog over here. Don't bring the animals over here. Don't yeah. Uh, 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 Junie, you're breaking the rule. You're gonna get arrested. <laughs> oh well. So we're parked. We're parked way over here. So that's the cathedral right there. Today is December 10th, very beautiful today. Weather is about, I'd say, right now, 80, 82 degrees, not too hot, comfortable. It's actually a warm day today.
All right, so technology here in Vietnam. Um, in general, technology out here is going to be a little bit more expensive, but again, it depends on like what you're wanting to buy. What is this? What is this, Junie? They said in this area, yeah. in September 2nd, 1945, more than one million Vietnamese in Saigon gathering here to hear the, the reporting from Ho Chi Minh. Really? He said that finally Vietnam get the freedom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, good. What's, the, what's with the plants here? here? Hmm. Anyways, technology. So, all right, cameras. So I bought my Sony X3000 here in Vietnam. It uh, was a little bit more expensive than it would be if I was to buy in America. Uh, prices for like a Canon 90D or you know a mirrorless camera, which are just a, a pinch more expensive. It's not unreasonable. Things are imported here, totally reasonable. Uh, they do have less of a selection here of certain brands, just like Thailand. You know, like in Thailand, like you can't you can't get Panasonic in Thailand. <laughs> they don't like there's no place that sells it. It's weird. And Vietnam's sort of the same way. Like cameras, everything's Canon here. So it's kind of annoying in that regard. So so you can order things online. That is a possibility here. There's websites like Tiki. Uh, that's pretty popular out here. So you can get what you need. Uh, but actual stores to buy things in the actual store, a little bit more expensive. Ordering online, a little bit more expensive for cameras. Now for random technology, like for, for me, for example, like I use a Zoom H2N microphone for my video courses and my professional website tutorial YouTube channel. And like in America, a Zoom H2N, it costs like uh, $200 or so. Out here, it's like, it's hard, hard to get to, uh, gear like that. So it depends on what you want. Now, now for laptops too, I highly recommend that you come out here with a laptop from America or your home country because they just don't have good machines out here. You can order a good laptop online here, but it just has to be imported and it's going to be crazy expensive. Like I wanted to get a Dell XPS. Oh. And like they don't, they don't have it in any store, like you have to order it and it has to be imported. And a Dell XPS would have cost me three thousand something dollars, so it's insane. And so you can get like a MacBook and things like that here, and the price for MacBooks and whatnot are just a pinch more expensive. Not unreasonable, you know. Like we're, I'm, I'm not mean pinch, but maybe like a hundred dollars more expensive. Where's the next Juni going? <laughs> so there we go. So there's that, but like for Windows machines, oh, you're out of luck here. They only have junky old laptops for in terms of Windows machines. And so it sucks, because like if you want a nice modern laptop with like 12 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a graphics card, a good, a good processor, like a nice, beautiful touch screen, they don't sell it out here. They, you can't get it. You have to order it online if you want a laptop like that. It's gonna be crazy expensive. So you're just better off coming here now one cool thing though that I like about Vietnam is that you can just pay to have your laptop upgraded which is what I actually ended up doing because like yeah 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 here you go so like what I that's what I ended up doing so I was I wanted to buy a Dell XPS it would have cost me three thousand dollars to get a Dell XPS out here I looked at a MacBook so the 16 inch MacBook would have cost me Four thousand dollars altogether with all the software that I would need to make <clears throat> record, screen, video editing, etc. And so it's like, oh, I really don't want to spend that much. Like, I don't, I don't mind spending two thousand dollars. Like, my budget's like one thousand eight hundred dollars, okay for a modern machine. I just couldn't get it, but I was able to upgrade my laptop. What I mean by that is like, out here, upgrades are super cheap. So I just went to the store. They opened up my laptop, replaced the hard drive with an SSD, upgraded the RAM changed out the battery, made it put in a new battery, completely new machine. $200. That's it, 200 bucks. And I got a completely new machine and that's gonna last me a few more years now. And so it's great. So, you know, that's an option out here too that uh, I think a lot of people kind of forget. 
Bangkok's the same way, where they have that mall, I forget the name of that mall, but uh, that mall where uh, you can do like repairs and whatnot. Same deal out here, repairs for your equipment, very cheap, upgrades, very cheap. And so there's that option, but again, if you're gonna be coming out here, Windows machines, super expensive. Cameras, a little bit more expensive. Random things like quality pair of headphones, very expensive out here. Microphones, very expensive. <laughs> tripods, tripods you have to order online. They're not too expensive, but like there's no store that carries tripods, which is really weird. I mean, you can find a tripod, but they're always tripods for uh, like uh, selfie sticks for cameras, like people who have like a phone. Uh, not a camera, a phone, like a phone. So, yeah, that's it. So, that's, you know, in general, technology is ooh, quite expensive out here. Unless it's cameras, which is reasonably priced, and upgrades to your gear is affordable. All right, everybody, so dropping Juni off. She's got to go work. I need to go to a cafe and do some work, too. Oof. All of a sudden, it got hazy today. It kind of reminds me of Thailand a little bit here, out here now. Bangkok, actually. Hi. All right, all right, Janine, yeah, let's see if you can get the helmet. Bye. All right. Thank you. All right, I'll see you later. Yep. All right, everybody, so I'm at, uh, obviously, I just dropped Junie off, and now I'm at a garage coffee here. And now I want to talk about, uh, just briefly, like, healthcare. Uh, I've been asked this a few times, and, so what I personally do as an expat is I have my own private health insurance, but I have health insurance for like something catastrophic. Like if I get into an accident or break a leg or something that would be really expensive. Um, but in general for like normal everyday stuff, I just pay out of pocket. So uh, you'd be surprised like out here in Asia in general, like the price for like the dentist or you have to go see a skin doctor because you have like a skin tag you want to cut off or, or you know, whatever simple everyday things like that you get an eye infection it's just not that expensive out here so it's okay to like pay for things out of pocket and that's basically it and so I find that Vietnam actually for healthcare is a little bit more expensive than uh, Thailand for example because uh, there unfortunately there is dual pricing here for healthcare whereas like Vietnamese are charged one thing foreigners are usually charged like just one Unfortunately, so it's something you gotta just know going in. It's still affordable, still cheap, but there is that element where you will just be expected to pay more because you're a foreigner. So kind of sucks, but still overall very affordable. And I do find that the price point here is just um, a little bit more expensive than what I was paying in Thailand for random things like an eye doctor in Thailand, for example, at one of the I forget the where it is in Bangkok, but like I, when I had my eye infection, it's like ended up costing me like ninety dollars altogether to get medication and whatnot. So, you know, yeah, you, the Bangkok has like little clinics you can go to. There's things like that here. So, your your best bet would just be to kind of ask like a word of mouth, jump on Facebook groups, like, hey guys, like, what do you recommend for a dentist and what do you recommend for a skincare professional, that sort of thing. Here's a, all right, my cold brew's finally ready. Okay. Excuse me. Ah, wonderful. Thank yeah. You. Okay, thank you. There we go. Alright, so let me just give you a quick tour of like uh, this cafe. There's like, quite a few of them in this uh, city. They're all called Garage Cafe. They're all themed the same way. Obviously, <laughs> like a garage. Uh, quite a few. A couple different little mini brands like uh, Kong Cafe, for example. And this is one of those little up and coming brands. So, a little bit more geared for young people, but yeah, it's the upstairs right here. So, oh, actually, I may come up here actually, it looks nice. But, yeah. Good coffee, but uh, this is something that I just, I really like about Vietnam is like, Cafes are all perfect for someone like me, like working on my laptop. Say you're edit a video, or blog post, and whatnot. Okay. Oh. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And this is my rooftop up top here. It's a nice little spot, actually. It's like really peaceful and beautiful. Like great sunsets. Like awesome view of landmark yeah 
So overall, I like Vietnam. It's really nice. Take a look at the neighborhood. It's really funny, like from high up, how chaotic it all looks. And then this construction site right here. Bane, bane of my existence. <laughs> you know, because like I'm a YouTuber and like 50% of my income comes from YouTube. Uh, not this channel, obviously, I know I have to say that. I just say that because like I get people who watch my channel for the first time. And uh, when I say I make YouTube's 50% of my income, they think sometimes it's this channel. Like, no, 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 no. I make WordPress tutorial videos and that's what I do. You know, website builder tutorials. So it's okay because like this place is nice. They're really, really accommodating because they let me take the office downstairs because that construction site is goes from seven in the morning to eleven nonstop, banging metal all day. It's just it's quite annoying. But they let me go into the office downstairs and I can do my thing there. I can record and edit and what I need to do when I need a little bit of space that's quiet because it's just it's too loud. So then they stop at eleven to one and that's okay too because eleven to one. That's when I can record myself with my DSLR and do the talking head stuff. And then one o'clock to five, they begin banging metal again. <laughs> and then they stop at five, and then it's this. And then it's just beautiful and peaceful. I, I just, you know, I love coming up here. The construction boom here is legitimate. Like this building right here, the hallow, whatever, this was, this was just being finished up when I, when this building was finished. And then right there, that white building was a uh, torn down, that was rebuilt. There's a building next to it being rebuilt. That's being built. This this building right here in front of me, that white one that you see off in the distance right there, completely brand new. Like they're literally tearing down each of these buildings one by one and rebuilding it and just making it nicer. You can see the uh, the train off in the distance too that they're building there so yeah it's cool oh yeah of course that's like uh, the mall over there and then you see the two buildings next to it right there completely brand new when I first got here that wasn't that wasn't there that was just an empty construction site so those are gonna be two large apartment buildings over there yeah, and that's it so like I said, I've said this in previous videos, I've never lived in a city that changes so fast as this place. And yeah. Also, look at that river. Isn't that weird? That's the one thing that puzzles me about the Vietnamese, how they don't build stuff like, like Bangkok. You know, I'm not saying they have to, I don't know, like just do something with it. Like Bangkok's made a few mistakes with the river, in my opinion, with too, too much construction. But literally, like, they have, like, the road right there. Then they have these tiny little shops, and then the land. So my guess would, I really don't know. Is it owned by people, and they just don't want to sell it? Or, it's just strange to me that there's all that land right there. And there's no use of it. It's just, there's no use of it. It's weird. Like, <laughs> why, like, like, this is a perfect spot. Like, just, you know, to leverage the that river in some way instead like they have the, there's this tiny little street with like these little like a wall right there so anyways guys I'll just leave this random video there if you enjoyed it uh, subscribe hit that like button and it's time for dinner so I'm gonna get going bye bye